Welcome back to the Round 4 Supercoach Show. We've had a round of footy that, oh, guys, it's felt like so long since we've been able to look at those game day stats and get those points on the board. But if you guys are anything like me, it wasn't the week we were expecting. A couple of flops, a couple of people who didn't think who just didn't do as well as we thought they would. So we've had to make some changes. Two trades this round, a bit different to the five from last week. Nath, going to go to you. Who are you picking up this week? Look, I'm going for one of Ed's boys, Cam McInnes. How good was to see him back playing in action? I think in a dragon side, which were very underwhelming, he was out by the length of the straight, the best player on the field for him. Um, he's one of those players that will just, you can put in your team and just set and go. And more importantly, thanks to Mary's wild sort of player, player movements of positions, he actually qualifies as a second row as lock. So I think he's someone you just got to pick up before his price rises over, over the next two weeks. He's a set and forget. And he was one of the first people I brought in. He certainly had a lot of tackles, especially at half time. It looked like he was going to break some sort of record there. Ed, what about you? Who are you picking up this week? Uh, so this week I'll be picking up Ryan Madison from the Eels. Um, he's obviously a big minute play. He turned out, I think, a full 80-minute performance for the Eels last week against the Broncos. Um, and he's got plenty of attacking upside, obviously, having been a, a previous uh, a playmaker at the Roosters. Um, and even before that, he just gets through a mountain of work in the middle for the, for the, uh, for the Eels. Um, and given, you know, they've got such a strong draw, um, I feel like the Eels, this is their year. So I feel like Madison's definitely going to benefit off that, particularly playing alongside Moses on that right edge. Yeah, I was really impressed with him against the Broncos on Thursday night. I'm going a, a similar attack in terms of my forwards, but I'm going with someone who impressed me not only with his performance, but the amount of minutes he played. Alex Twal was very good for the West Tigers. And even though over the first two weeks, I think he only had sort of 50 and then 60 minutes, last week against the Sharks, he played 80 minutes, which is seriously impressive, especially for someone you could put in that front row. That means my front row is now Haas and Twal, two essentially 80-minute players, both getting at least a point a minute. That's something that I just had to get up to because, yeah, he his performance was too good not to bring him into my team this weekend. Uh, Nath, who are you holding on to? Who are you not ready to let go of yet, but just keeping your eye on? Yeah, someone I'll just keep watch over the next couple of weeks. Ryan Pappenhausen. I've, I've like many people, have went for the two fullback strategy. I got with Pong around. He was in the starting lineup for my team. Uh, look, I thought he was going to excel with this new rule change, and he's look. He hasn't delivered any bad scores. Like, he's been consistent. It's just not, like, consistently at that sort of gun status people are expecting with his, with his, in this 2020 season. So, I think a lot of people have traded him out for you, Tedesco's, for you, Travojevic's. I reckon someone just give him a couple of weeks, see how that storm attack sort of develops throughout the season. And I reckon he could be someone that could all of a sudden increase really sharply. Yeah, I think they the Storm will definitely bounce back against the Rabbitohs this weekend. So South Sydney players will be on the lookout for Pappenhausen and trying to exploit some of those new rules. What about you, Ed? Who are you holding on to? So I'm going to be clinging on to Blake Braley from the Sharks for just one extra week. Um, I think he's been a little bit of a letdown points-wise, given that he you know, is a pretty big minute hooker. Um, but I feel like I'm going to hang on to him just for another week, give him another chance to prove whether or not he should stay on my bench Obviously, there is also the uh, the Harry Grant trade looming. Um, I'm going to see how Blake Braley plays this weekend. Um, and if he doesn't do too well, I'm definitely going to make that trade to Harry Grant. I'm exactly the same with you in that boat. He's sitting there on my bench. He's a, essentially an 80-minute hooker. But Harry Grant, that option is looming next week that it could be a massive price rise there. So, obviously... We'll be looking out for that one. My hold this week is, and what might seem like an obvious one, but a lot of people have pulled the trigger on this one. Jason Tamalello obviously ruled out with bone bruising on the knee for this week's match against the Sharks. It shocked a lot of people. I know it shocked me. No one was really expecting that after his performance last week, but it's looking good. Um, I think he'll only be out the one week. I'm Fingers crossed he'll only be out the one week, and I'm just keeping him on my bench in the hope that he'll be back next week and, continue to put on those big scores for me. Um, Nath, we've talked about the people who we're going to hold on to for one more week. Who are you getting rid of? Well, this is going to be controversial since he's also only out for one week. But Katoni Staggs, look, I know everyone jumped on after that incredible performance against South. We put on 121. But you, you, we got to look into that performance more deeply. You'll see that a lot, that price and that, that point score was significantly inflated by the tries he scored. I think if you 
sort of dissect the games against North Queensland and Parramatta, he's only averaging 40. And even that game against North Queensland, his price was still, sorry, his score was still inflated by a try. So I think he's someone that is going to be very inconsistent throughout the season. So I don't mind getting rid of him now. And then I think once, once he comes back, I think he's someone you're just going to watch and see because I reckon he's just going to, he's going to be very inconsistent in his scoring. And I think this is, if you're looking to get rid of him and maybe downgrade to like a Bradman Best or a Ben Hampton while you can, I reckon this is the time to do it. Now, Ed, I believe you're getting rid of another Broncos player as well this weekend. I am. I'm getting rid of Anthony Milford. Uh, it's definitely a decision I regret. It was one I mulled over for a long time when I first picked my team. Uh, I just thought, given he was a, you know, a former super coach keeper, a gun, a dual position player, and the Broncos were looking a bit better this year, I thought it might be a good opportunity to uh, catch on to some Anthony Milford magic, but he just hasn't proved to be uh, as strong as I predicted he would be over these first three rounds. And last week's score of 16 against the Eels was just too much for me to keep him on the bench. Um, still got a couple of other trades I want to do on the side, but I'm hopefully going to use him to upgrade to Tom Trebojevic. So that's my uh, that's my sell of the week, Anthony Milford. Turbo, I think, will definitely be someone that a lot of teams are looking at this weekend. My sell is one that I was hesitant to, hesitant to make last week, but he didn't perform for me on the weekend. Liam Knight, um, I don't think it's anything against him. I think he's set to be a really good player for the rest of the year for the Bunnies. But at around that 400 price range, there are better front row options there, especially because he was in my starting team. And that's why I've gotten rid of him to go up to Alex Twal. I think Knight is set to drop a bit more in price this week, especially against a Storm side who is looking to bounce back after their loss to the Raiders. So yeah, Knight's out for me this weekend. Nothing personal to him, nothing personal to the Bunnies. I think they've just got a tough draw this weekend against the Storm. But also I think... 12, 80 minute prop is a much better option there in the front row. Now, guys, based on last week's results, based on last week's game, games and this week's team lists, who are your big winners and losers? Ed, we'll start with you. Who have you got as the big winner in your eyes? I was very pleased to see uh, Eliezer Katoa preferred on that left, left edge again for the Warriors this week in team lists. Um, he had a massive performance against the Dragons. Well, pretty much the entire Warriors team had a massive performance, but he was particularly impressive um, given his age and, you know, that he's still such a young player, but he's churning out some massive minutes on that left edge for the Warriors. Um, his score was slightly inflated by a try, but even his base stats are really strong um, and he played 61 minutes on the weekend. So if we can see those those minutes continue in, in the weeks coming, I think that's a, that's a big plus. So, yeah, I was very glad to see him starting again this weekend. And who are you disappointed by? Um, I'm a little bit disappointed by Jake Trebojevic so far this season. Um, Genuinely much more of a keeper uh, in Supercoach, but I just don't think his scores have been up to scratch in the first three weeks of the competition. Um, He's still playing his 80 minutes for the Seagulls, um, still getting through his same work, but I think attacking stats have been slightly down. And even against the Bulldogs with that big score that Manly posted, um, Trebojevic only scored in the 50s. So... I think that trade is is looming. Um, I think there's a trade from a Trebojevic to a Madison, perhaps. Um, but yeah, that that's the, that was the big loser for me, Jake Trebojevic, over the weekend. Nath, what about you? Who have you got as your winner and your loser from the last weekend? It's funny you mentioned Jake's your loser because I got Tom as my winner. He was the top score for the round. And I think with this rule change, has suited his game immensely. I think it's a Bulldogs mm-hmm. team that were solid defensively for the first two weeks. He carved them up. He looks like he's the focal point of their attack. So I think, and his price sort of remains steady, which is a surprise considering he scored 150. Uh, I think he's someone that you're going to have to have in your team for the run home. And yeah, I think he was incredible. As for my loser, poor Connor Watson. I mean, after when Braley went down with the injury, he looked like a viable option at hooker. And then when Pierce went down early during the game, I thought he was in, in for a big one. And he just did that angle injury right at the worst time possible. Uh, he only scored, what, I think seven points of the round. Yeah, seven points of the round. And it looks like he's going to be out for two months. So it's, it's such a shame because when he's on, he's an incredible talent, I think. Yeah, I agree. Connor's just had a really hard luck with injury over the years. And we just hope he can get back out there soon because that nine role could have been his, as you said, with Braley out. My winners and losers this week. I think a big winner is another hooker. 
Um, Harry Grant, we mentioned earlier that it's a trade that a lot of people will do in a couple of weeks' time. But I think just the fact that he's been able to come into the West, this West Tigers side and in the first week that he's available, grab that number nine jersey and make the most of that opportunity, I think it just shows how talented he is, but also how much faith Madge has, is it, has in him. While he's not going to be an 80-minute player with Billy Walters on the bench, I just think that he has that potential to break open the game and really grind defences down, as we saw against the Sharks, especially when the Sharks had that smaller middle on with the likes of Braley, Magulius and Moylan all on at the same time. So I think Harry Grant was a big winner from this weekend that he got the starting role and he delivered big time. And I'm sure he'll deliver in the weeks to come. My big loser is one of your boys, Ed, that a surprise selection that I just can't get my head around. Terrell Fumayono. <laughs> I don't know what happened on the weekend. He was one of their best in the first two rounds. And then I think Mary barely played it, played in 15 minutes on the weekend against the Warriors. I was just surprised by that because he's a great asset to have in either the second row or even in that centre position if need be. But for some reason, Ewan Aitken was preferred there on the bench as well. So he probably took some minutes away. And now he's out of the 17 altogether this weekend with Trent Merrin coming back into the side. So he was um, a, a good signing, a good pickup from the Panthers. But yeah, Mary just doesn't seem to have the faith in, the, faith in him to, despite the performances in those first two weeks. So he's the unfortunate one for me that I think he's going to have to go out of my side as a result because Mary just doesn't have the faith in him. Now, guys, two more things to quickly finish up. We're going to go through our captain's pick for this weekend and then also our player to watch. Nath, who have you got as your captain this week and then your player to watch? Once again, he's my set and forget. Like the Payne Haas is an absolute monster. As you, as you mentioned earlier, he's an 80-minute forward and that is valuable in this game. Um, he scored 87 as my captain last week and he's given me no reason to take it off him. One for me to watch this week is Josh Mansour, someone who was... Hmm. Wasn't sort of hasn't been relevant in terms of super coach over the past couple of years, but his first three, three rounds he scored 65, 79, and then 85 against the Knights last week. The thing which impressed me the most out of those scores, zero tries. Mm. It's all these base stats. It's all that that work, the attacking work that he's been putting in, all the running meters. I think he's over 200 running meters to start the season. So if he can just nab one or two tries in that wing, I reckon he could be someone. I could all of a sudden turn into a gun for the sort of later rounds. I really like that shout. He was impressive on the weekend, took a lot of carries back um, from kicks and he got himself in and, in, in and amongst it. So he's definitely one to look out for. Ed, what about you? Captain and player to watch this weekend. I'll be putting the captain on James Tedesco this week. Um, coming up against the Broncos on Thursday night, it's it's got James Tedesco written all over it, that clash. it's um, He showed against the Rabbitohs that... When he's got a, a big matchup like Latrell Mitchell, he really aims up and he, he scored a big triple, triple figure score on Friday night in that rivalry match. So I'm definitely predicting him to go big again this week for the Roosters. Given the rule changes as well, he, he really, really relished um, those opportunities through the middle of the field and, and he scored a try against the uh, the Rabbitohs. So I'm, I'm definitely predicting a similar performance on um, Thursday night against the Broncos. And then I guess for me, my captain at this weekend... Look, I was flirting with the idea of James Tedesco. I'm definitely going to be sticking the VC on him on for Thursday night's match against the Broncos, not only because of his form against the Rabbitohs, but if you look at last weekend, Gutho scored so many points against the Broncos, so it shows that a fullback has that potential to play a big role against them. So my vice captain, 100% going on Teddy, and if I need to, can leave him around if he gets that sort of 90-plus score that he could very easily achieve. But... At the moment, my C is going on my new pickup, Alex Twile. If he can play 80 minutes, especially against the Titans, um, I think that could be, he could be in for another big sort of 70, 80 plus score, which is what you need to sort of make sure. You want to guarantee that your captain's going to get that strong score and go from there. And then uh, an interesting one for my player to watch is Api Korosau. Uh It was very interesting after two 80 minute performances in the first couple of rounds. He didn't get the full 80. Um, obviously, the Panthers weren't great in the second half, so Ivan Cleary tried changing a few things around, brought him off. He eventually came back on, so it'll be interesting to see how he responds to that this weekend against the Warriors at, down at Campbelltown Stadium again. So a lot of people brought Appy in. Will he deliver? Will he go back to that 80-minute role? We'll have to wait and see. Um, that's all from us today. Uh, we hope... You went well in your super coach for round three. We hope you've got some good trades to make for the upcoming round. And 
make sure to head to sportingnews.com slash au for all your NRL Supercoach news.